so um, I'll just uh, share my screen with you. And um, there we go. OK, so um, session today is on Lean Industry 4.0. And um, as a few of you uh, in the audience just said in the introductions there, um, you know me probably from a Lean background primarily. And um, I've been working in Lean for um, probably about 30 years now. Um, having run the Lean Enterprise Research Center at Cardiff University, Martin, you were mentioning, et cetera, as well as um, consultancy and, and various things like that. Um, but more recently moved into the sort of uh, link into the Industry 4.0 side. So really what I want to do is ex uh, share a few of uh, my um, experiences and knowledge and some of the research that we've been going on as well as the uh, the Van of Nerds tour that we just recently did in northern France. And um, <clears throat> from that, we will um, see where we go, um, share a little bit about some of the findings of the research activity and, and perhaps where I see some of the uh, where we might go in the future. So um, I won't go through more background. Um, basically, that's uh, some of the stuff that I've been doing over the last uh, number of uh, number of years. So um, what we thought we might do is just uh, try and get a, an insight into where you are in terms of your uh, understanding and knowledge. So first of all, in the, uh, the lean space, um, are we doing a poll here, Emma? Yes, I'm just about to yeah. launch it. Shall I launch okay. it now? Yeah, yeah if you okay. would, yeah. So just pick one of these four that you feel um, is, is you in terms of your uh, knowledge of lean. And then in a minute, we'll do the same for the industry 4.0 as well. Okay, so 100% said mature, wide experience of lean. Okay, all right, very good. Some of you are probably being a bit modest there. I'm sure there's there's a one or two experts out oh, there. But... Actually, sorry, I think we just had one other last minute saying early, early limited experience of lean. Okay, all right. So mostly fairly, uh, fairly knowledgeable. Okay, good. Um, so, um, <clears throat> if we <clears throat> if we now think about the industry 4.0 side of things, which may be for some of us uh, newer, obviously the the term uh, industry 4.0 is only ten years uh, been coined for ten years, and I suppose we've all seen this picture. I just took this one off the web. That really we're looking at. Um, the cyber physical interaction, really the connectivity of computers rather than just computing uh, knowledge and so forth. So Internet of Things and, and so forth. So I suppose that's more around what Industry 4.0 and probably over the last number of years, there's been some discussion about even Industry 5.0, um, which, to be honest, um, I think is more of a buzzword than anything else. I can't see there really is a thief uh industrial revolution i suspect what industry 5.0 is more about is what we got wrong in industry 4.0 trying to correct it although as i'll share later i'm not sure we quite have understood enough to actually correct the mistakes that were made in industry 4.0 but but we'll come back to that um so in, in terms of industry 4.0 <clears throat> obviously uh some of you have been working on this some of you perhaps not not so much but generally speaking, we could see that Industry 4.0 is, is really a set of digital technologies that are being applied into organizations or wider supply chains. And this is some of the research that I've been doing in this case with a, a group of uh, academics uh, from um, four different continents, actually. Um, and in terms of the technologies, there's clusters of technologies in things like Internet of Things, uh, big data, cloud computing, wireless centers, sensors, 3D um, printing or, or um, additive manufacturing, it's sometimes called, um, augmented reality, including virtual reality, uh, cobots, collaborative robots, machine deep learning, uh, maybe AI in that area, and the use of remote control and monitoring. So usually, um, quite often, it's clustered into these sort of um, eight areas. So just to give you that insight. Now, 
obviously for most of us, <clears throat> like any other thing, we started to use some of these things perhaps without even realizing it, like cloud backups and, and, and so forth. And obviously some of the things that are actually on smartphones is taking us in this direction. But I'd just like to get another another poll, just get an insight into where you are in this. So um, no real formal experience of uh, Industry 4.0, uh, using one or more technologies, uh, wide experience or, or quite expert. <clears throat> okay, so we have forty three percent said early user of some mm -hmm. technologies like cloud. Yep. Um, Forty-three percent said mature, wide experience, and then fourteen percent advanced. Okay, good. I have to be quite careful if there's an advanced person <laughs> in the group, etc. Okay, thanks for that. So, yeah, a more sort of um, slightly lower, perhaps on average, than than in the, the, the lean space. So, um, some background to this is uh, <clears throat> probably about um, two and a half, three years ago. Um, I first drew this picture. Um, which was really trying to show that there's a disconnected bridge, which sort of probably builds on, some of you might be familiar with the Shingo bridge of a disconnect for the left-hand side, of uh, the right-hand side and the middle between continuous improvement, or if you like the lean or Six Sigma or Agile tools and techniques, and the right-hand side, which in Toyota language would be the respect for, for people side of things. Uh, between the continuous improvement lean folk and the industry 4.0 and often industry 4.0 is coming out of um, ICT, computer science maybe, um, lean is probably coming out of more of the operations management or supply chain and obviously the respect for people is probably more coming out of the uh, HR. Um, this was the early version, increasingly now I probably see it as three legs of a stool, it isn't HR is one end and, and industry 4.0 the other end, having said that, that probably the biggest divide is between the people side and Industry 4.0, because Industry 4.0 in the original incarnation was very much a technology led, very little about, uh, about the people. So this particular picture is a, a rather grey washed out uh, tone because it actually comes from some teaching I've done with my colleague Tobion Netland um, in the virtual reality. So We've been teaching uh, what we could call Lean Industry 4.0 using a VR uh, virtual platform, in which case you need to have these sort of toned down to not uh, blind people and, and give people headaches and so forth. So this is coming in an upcoming paper uh, talking about the experience. Um, some of my other experience in this space has been with Emma, um, with something called the Enterprise Excellence Network, which is basically a group of companies across Europe. And we go round and uh, benchmark, go into sort of deep dive Gembas. So you hear presenting material, going and doing Gembas, um, uh, and al analyzing and then presenting back some of, uh, some of the learnings and so forth. So we've just re returned from um, visiting Thermo Fisher in Vilnius in Lithuania, which is Thermo Fisher's best global uh, lean site. So obviously that gave some insights. This is actually the uh, the VR, um, it's actually called Leading Intelligent Lean, the course as you can see, um, and this is actually using some uh, digital technology to teach. So you can see um, the, the first session is an introduction, uh, we're, we're meeting and greeting. Uh, the second one going round is uh, presenting to uh, an auditorium and there's a screen behind us. Um, the third one is um, a couple of colleagues from Bosch presenting in that same auditorium, as you can see, and, and the slides are behind them. And the fourth is an example of uh, breakout sessions, um, if you like, whiteboards and, and, and post-it notes and so forth. So actually this giving experiences, not, not just from using this technology for this uh, education, but actually 
um, in learning from a lot of the delegates who are in some cases quite mature on their, uh, <clears throat> on their uh, uh, lean industry 4.0 journey. Another insight, which I think I put on one of the flyers was the so-called van of nerds. So this is the, the nerds down here on the left-hand side. Uh, basically a group of uh, academics, uh, industrialists, consultants from uh, an, a range of con uh, countries um, in Europe, actually one from the US, and we visited 11 countries in northern France over five days. Um, this is our van on the top corner, and I'm not quite sure which of the three on the bottom right is Homer Simpson, but they all seem like nerds to me. So, so we were having some fun, actually, one of the companies uh, in, their, uh, in their library here. So these were some of the experiences. Some other of the research work uh, has been working on some case studies of organisations uh, going down this route. So uh, Ferracia and Stellantis is the work uh, with uh, Florian. Which, uh, which, which is sort of ongoing. And Hilti uh, is a case study in using uh, virtual platforms to do virtual events on a global basis uh, and remotely. And here's some desk research and, and one of the journals publish, uh, publishing the work in. So one of the pieces of work that, that we did, which was a desk piece of, piece of research, was there's, there's quite an explosion of, um, certainly in the academic arena, of people writing um, and talking about this, this topic we could generally call combining lean and industry 4.0. Um, generally speaking, what we found in this research, so we actually surveyed the top 300 academics globally to try and find out what this was. And quite often you got people starting with an engineering background coming into either an engineer very much with a technical mindset. So we felt we needed to sort of put this definition down. It's a bit long and wordy, perhaps, um, probably more meant for an academic audience, but I'll, I'll read it out just to give an insight into what we see this topic is or should be. So firstly, uh, an innovative socio-technical paradigm. So I'll translate that into real person speak. So that means it's about people and technology, not just one or the other that uses both human and artificial intelligence. So rather than just relying on machine learning and AI, et cetera, some of the technologies coming in, we very much want to, 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 to use the lean approach and the human brain and the human problem solving. So it's not one or the other, it's actually both together. Um, and this relies on strategic cultural and systems and tools and various industry 4.0 technologies. As we'll see, a lot of the problems with the industry 4.0 sort of revolution was it did the technologies on its own at an operational level. So it didn't really do much in thinking in the context, the strategy deployment, the leadership, the behavior, the change, the wider systems, and often the implementation of industry 4.0 in the early stages was about use cases, or in other words, one technology in one limited area before it was scaled up which isn't really what we think it would be the right thing necessary to do. So obviously this could have continuous improvement. We're all familiar with the short Kaizans, uh, et cetera. Discontinuous, the industry 4.0 is more likely to be discontinuous change. Could be in the organization of the supply chain. We see there's a bit of a debate whether you should simplify in the lean literature or lean approach or manage complexity using industry 4.0, our perspective was you should simplify first to make it as simple as possible, then use the technology to manage the complexity that you're left with. So in other words, don't go in and throw technology at it to manage the complexity there is, because a lot of it might be easy to get rid of in the first place. That then gives a benefit, triple bottom line, people, planet, and uh, profit, that meets the needs of the customer and the organization and the employees and wider society. So as I say, a lot of the original industry 4.0 was very much about how do we use technology um, and if you like, almost impose it on people rather than the other way around, the industry five people talk about of how do we understand the needs of people and use technology to help them. So I think we're more in the, the latter 
camp. So that's perhaps a rather long definition, but that's probably explaining why that uh, that's so detailed. And some more of the research that we did, this is actually uh, a group led by um, a Brazilian stroke uh, Australian. Uh, we were looking at um, um, a survey uh, and we were trying to establish what did people who'd been doing this sort of industry 4.0 for a time think and what did people who'd come to it newly think and what we found without going through the minutiae of this is certainly people coming late into this had a lot of preconceptions about what industry 4.0 which were mostly wrong so you know everyone will benefit equally wrong it's actually uh, like many other things some people will gain, gain a lot more than others and it's not necessarily the people putting the effort in or, or, or spending the money that will get the, the benefits and so forth um, that you can uh, you can apply these technologies separately and they'll be effective no you probably need to have clusters or you have to look at a whole system which is probably what we learned in the lean community we need to look at a whole order fulfillment for instance rather than just one machine or one work area and probably we need to look at a supply chain perspective as well and the early adopters probably had a much greater insight into sort of some of the uh, some of the the facts that actually we will all eventually be going digital um, that we probably need to do uh, limited learning experiments or use cases or pilots before scaling up um, that um, this isn't just in manufacturing although that might be the starting place the customers always don't always notice you've done this and um, we actually need to look at the people side as well so this was actually quite well understood in industrials further along on the journey but not people early early in their in their journey so um, these are a few insights into looking at it from an industry point of view so this is actually some of the uh, data we collected from people on the first uh, three, well, in fact, the second to fourth version of the Leading Intelligent Lean course. So this basically gave us an insight in what, what, what does industry want to know about this? So I won't go through all of them, but um, one question is, should I do this locally or should this be a global program? The answer to that is uh, it depends on what you're applying. So obviously, if you want to put an app on your phone, it's local. But if you want to put a new MES, MES, MES system uh, throughout all your factories, then probably got to have that globally. On balance, it's probably more global than local, which obviously causes issues around autonomy and choice for, for sites and so forth. Um, should I organize um, as one function or many functions? So if you take the three legs of the bridge, they're sort of all separate what what we found and working with the organizations that there's an increasing trend on the higher level uh, the earlier adopters that the, the people further on to actually bring some of this together in one department or one uh, support unit that, that is called something like lean industry 4.0 or smart digitization or whatever it is but in other words, it's not seen as two, two separate areas is, is where some of the leading uh, companies are going. So what's the correct staff for this? How do you develop a set of strategy? Um, our findings in, in the research and with, with working with the organizations is absolutely key is do you develop your organizational strategy and this becomes a way of delivering it rather than chasing the last, last technology or the latest lean tool to to, to apply. Um, how do you measure return on investment? That's a very interesting question. Um, in, in two minutes, I can't give you the complete answer because some of the benefits of this are actually intangible. Um, what we have found, certainly in a very advanced case where we studied one organization, is a very advanced lean organization that then had digitized the lean. The return on investment was actually quite low because they'd already reaped a lot of the benefits on lean. So merely digitizing the lean didn't give the benefit, it's the next step that would give them the return on investment. And I'll come back to that at the end of the session. Um, how do you make uh, life attractive? 
for people wanting to, to join the organization. And what we found with a lot of people going down the technology route is they were almost um, dehumanizing the role of operators who became almost like robots. In other words, they became almost slave to the robot rather than the other way around. And hence, um, we, we see really organizations have two options here. You can either have, if you like, um, unintelligent workers, or you actually work, move the workforce to be highly intelligent so they can actually do uh, programming and, and actually development with the technology, in which case you need very, very high skilled people. So we see some organization going one direction, some the other direction, we, we suspect that the going to the highly educated, highly trained, highly uh, developed operators or, or people in the organization will be the most effective way. So one of my co-authors on this, uh, uh, David Romero, a University of uh, Monterey in, in Mexico, has been doing a lot of work in particular at the so-called operator 4.0. So what's the operator of, of the future going to look like? And what are the pitfalls and lessons? So we'll probably weave a few of those in as, 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 we, as we go through. So these are the sort of things that, 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 that might be required. And the last one was how do you sustain programs? So these are probably the sort of questions that many of you are, are wrestling with um, at the moment. So <clears throat> looking at the, the Van of Nerds tour that uh, we did a couple of months ago in, um, in France, is we, we, we saw in many of the organizations we, we went to very good examples of lean. This is actually in a distribution center just next to, um, next to a, a, a factory, which I've just covered up the name of the factory. Not that it's a bad, just, just, just to protect their identity. And, um, and basically you can see a well-organized uh, dispatch bay here, uh, very 5S yeah. and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see here evidence of two types of improvement. One was around um, an andon cord or virtual andon cord pull. And the other was um, more your classic Kaizen events, um, sort of A through and solving and so forth. So very good use of lean. But what we didn't see was a great deal of um, uh, Industry 4.0 in this particular site. Yes, there were digital uh, displays. Um, so the, some of the um, capture of data had been done digitally, but that was about as far as they went down the down the digital digital route. And then we went into other organizations. Um, this is actually uh, an industry 4.0 lab in one of the universities, but it probably replicates what we saw in some of the more advanced industry 4.0 and without going through every single technology, uh, you can see here, but you know, RFID tags, Internet of Things sensors, 3D printing, um, use of AGVs at the front side, uh, cobots, um, application of digital, digital twins, digital da dashboards. So what they were trying to do here <coughs> is they actually had a real dummy manufacturing production line to make these electric scooters but they were trying to demonstrate all of these different technologies and as we went around we we sort of thought well, this is fantastic but where's the lean stuff so in other words this was this was all done in isolation of the usual lean stuff that you'd expect so we were sort of feeling that well you either got lean or you got industry 4.0 and there weren't many that were trying to bring the two together so I don't think this particular companies we saw were different in France. I think that's what you often see. Um, we did see uh, one absolutely standout technology, which, which quite blew us away. Um, and this, this is uh, this, this, this thing called a key prod, which is this, um, this um, well, whatever is it, elliptical uh, um, little machine. There's a green one on the right-hand side magnetic sting on sticking on the machine in, in the factory and the left hand side is is um uh from the corporate uh, video sort of thing um so this this product key prod or this is a simpler version this is a display screen um what what this company had done is the problem with smart machines 
is if you want to buy a standard machine, it costs X. If you want to buy a smart machine, it probably costs one and a half X. So they, they can be very expensive to get that digital technology. Um, and the other problem with the digital technology is, is if you've got a mix of machines, obviously in a, in a cluster or a cell, you find that the technology, smart technology on machine A doesn't talk to the smart technology in machine B. So what they've done is instead of thinking of plugging um, the sensor into the analytics of the machine, they actually develop what we could call the voice of the machine. So this is uh, a device with um, artificial, in artificial intel intelligence internal to it. And basically what it does is it listens to the machine and within two to three cycles of the machine running, which could be five minutes, say, um, it's learnt the machine and it goes on to learn, learn more and more about the machine. So it can then uh, tell you what, uh, you know, what the cycle time is, what the OE is, um, what the issues are when the machines and tools are wearing out. So in other words, it, it, it can make a not smart machine into a smart machine that then the information can go on to um, display boards like this, which would be next to the machine. You can just see the edge of one here or uh, visual display boards that could be in the usual sense on um, in, in um, huddle areas and so forth. So this was actually a really interesting uh, standout uh, technology that we saw. Um, we did find in some cases, organizations starting to bring this together. This, this was uh, an aerospace company um, that was starting to, for instance, you can see they were taking the measurement control machines here, uh, digitizing it so that the information was going here. So it actually was a digitization of calibration measurements of, of uh, um, products being made in a human way, um, rather than a out of sight, out of mind inside of uh, the machine. So they were uh, using this as a use case. They were also um, doing production control. They're actually using QSUM, not necessarily a recommendation, but they were using QSUM as, as the approach. And they were using uh, digitization of uh, local lean boards and so forth, as, as in this example. So this was one of the companies that was trying to, trying to generally bring, bring these two together. And um, from, from this, what we established was probably in, in terms of the thinking that we could say, if we were, let's assuming we were starting with a fairly lean organization to start with, that you could start with one or a limited number of uh, use cases. In this case, it's an engine manufacturing, and you can see here artificial, um, um, or, sorry, augmented reality is being used to identify where to put the part and what the key uh, elements are. So in other words, it's, it's like taking the, the standard work actually into reality. So you could actually see this uh, embedded on top of the, uh, uh, on a screen so that the operator could use some of these technologies. So this will be one example, in this case, uh, use of AR. And then the second phase, um, you could think of scaling this up. In this case, it was digitization of boards. So I just took four examples from round one of the factories. Um, as you can see, scaling up, taking it right across the organization. Um, we found a very few organizations have gone even further than this. Um, in this case, it's a, a full lean digital factory. Um, and the, the top picture is, if you like, almost a value stream map. Um, looking at where you would apply the different technologies, the lean and, and, and so forth. And then the bottom part of this is looking at the different types of technology. So some of that would be, if you like, the MES. Some of that would be <coughs> um, things like um, uh, electronic Kanban, for example. And some of the ones at the bottom were digitalizing a lot of the standard lean tools like SMED, or suggestion schemes, so they were an app-based solution. So that would be an example of an organization that would really, if you like, almost completely digitized lean. Um, and then we foresee the fourth stage of this journey. This is, this is actually uh, from one organization that's actually um, looking at um, identifying faults in, in PCB manufacturing. 
And in this case, the, the learning experience, the research with this was showing that um, if you do it with a human mind, you'll get a result X. If you get used artificial intent, intelligence, you get maybe half the X, so you, you reduce the defects considerably. But actually the best result is the combination of the human mind and artificial intelligence, and then you get uh, a tenth of X and so forth. So really what we're saying here is that if you go from single case, multiple case, something really quite easy to get into, say visualizing screens, for example, to full rollout, probably the big benefit you'll get probably is at the second stage, that might be a big step, and actually the fourth stage. The third stage probably doesn't give you a great deal more if you're already quite advanced. So the real uh, big steps are stage two and stage four. So thinking of, of that as, as a, a ladder or a journey. So um, sort of running through the various things that we've been. So um, I'd just, just like to get you, your thoughts on where, where do you think is the key? If you were to say, what's the one area that probably is most important to get right. What, what would you think that'd be if you took our little uh, disconnected bridge? Peter, in your in your definition and yeah. in this diagram, um, I'm I'm looking uh, I'm looking for the absence of process and 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 how important that is because you're right. talking about scaling up you have yeah. to you yeah. have to you have to mature a process prove it get the data to support it yeah um that you know measure its <clears throat> values and success and then you need to scale it up that's that's yeah. that's the bit i'm not I, I would say i would take i would i would take that as implicit in this sort of lean part in in the middle here that that sort of um example that that you that you give so if you take that as it as sort of already there, I suppose was was the thinking. Any any other comments or thoughts of where do you think the secret is? Um, based on our experience, based on training about two hundred people on uh, on uh, lean industry four point zero, the various cases and examples. So from what I hear from the conferences uh, that we host, it, it's a respect for people. I think it's that side that's been being ignored. Um, so th th I expect there would be one of the key things and, and use the industry 4.0 uh, uh, just to uh, to get rid of waste as a different different uh, tool set, different different methodology of solving issues. Yeah. Yeah. OK, spot on. So the key differentiators between the really good and the not so good are people, leadership and learning. So that's what we found on this, that it isn't the great technologies. It's not the great lean. It's actually the differentiator is in this respect for people and starting with what people want and what, what they want to learn, uh, how they want to create autonomy for themselves, how they want to connect to other people. The leadership and style of leadership of, of more servant leadership, coaching leadership and actually creating this this learning organization or if you like, since I led organization seem to be seem to be the differentiator so very good so um this um this is some further work that we're doing um this is actually th this framework is more main at uh, uh, the academic community than perhaps the in the industry but really if you like the industry 4.0 is very much around the technology merging technology or new technology uh, sorry emerging or, or mature technology and very much about the hard systems. What, what we think this whole subject is about is we need to be thinking about what do you do strategically? Um, Brendan, to your point, what do you need to do in the systems or the process area? So it could be the process of, of, of that piloting that you were talking about or, or other processes. At the operational level, how do we integrate the tools and techniques? The vast majority of work that we see is, is actually in this operational level. So it's not really dealing with the, this strategic or systems level, and it's not including things like what are the human side of things, um, what are the competencies and learning, uh, what are the barriers and roadmaps and maturity of this stuff, 
how does this work in different industries or different countries, for example? So, you know, uh, was it you, Brendan, that was military or no, one of the other guys, Martin, but whatever. But, um, you know, how does this work in a, in a defense sector compared to an agricultural sector or something like that? And it might not be the same. How does this work in a wider supply chain? Um, how does it work in a, an environment where we aren't very resilient? Um, we've had COVID and we've had price shocks and um, some of you might not know that we, we're lacking a prime minister again in the UK. <laughs> the, the, the last one only lasted 45 days and so forth. And, 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 and how do you create a readiness? What do you need to do first? How do you then turn that into results? So these are all the things, certainly in terms of academic research that we need to focus on. But I think any of you in industry going down this route, these are the various elements that actually need to be taken into account, as well as implications and what do the policymakers do in terms of supporting this. So if any of you are interested um, in any further work in this, in this, uh, in, in this area, uh, one of the things we will be doing in the new year is we will be taking this, uh, this idea of um, networking, learning, sharing, benchmarking, etc building on the existing work we've done with the Enterprise Excellence Network, a uh, group of companies across Europe, we will be developing uh, a network of uh, Lean Industry 4.0 um, to share, if you like, knowledge and answer some of the questions which I, I posed earlier, or some of these key considerations, similar sort of things that uh, certainly organisations are, are starting to think about or ask. Okay, that's that's pretty much the end of uh, our session uh, today. So um, I'm going to come back to you, and uh, maybe we can open it up. I see a few more people have uh, have just joined. Uh, Daryl, Mike, Elizabeth, Srudan, I think. <laughs> so um, questions, comments, observations. I don't agree. Anything you like. Or I'll pick on someone. How about you, Daryl? Do you want to say something? Comment from yourself? Hi. Good to see you. Hi. Yes. No, Daryl, the, Daryl, the almost Welsh man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, good to see you. Hi, hi, Emma, as well. Nice to see you again. No, it's. Um, it was very interesting to see. I mean, some of it I've seen before. It was uh, yeah, of course, yeah. But it's uh, it's nice to it's nice to see it uh, again and hear you talking about. It. And I think I think the future. It's it's for me. You know, my 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 research has been about the, the previous years, really about lean as a as a learning system. Yeah. So I think that the learning element that you present from the perspective of these industry four zero technology is very uh, relevant and very useful. So. Yeah. Very it's no, no point in digitalizing waste, Peter. No, 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 exactly, exactly. Good. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yeah, well, one of the one of the things that that we um, uh, we discussed on on uh, se se several times in different <laughs> events is that um, it's it's also the whole four four point zero. It, it has a, a strain on on different. Um, knowledge so people with a certain skill set are, are scarce so yeah it's exactly. very yeah, difficult yeah, to get yeah. them yeah um so that's one side uh, and but also for the uh, for the for the operator it ask ask sometimes a, a different skill set um, yeah. uh, but not everybody is is able to be trained to that level or to that understanding so there is also mm -hmm. some social in, in yeah, downside of, of all of that so that that was also one of the discussions that, that yeah we have. Definitely. I mean, as, as I said, you know, if we think of the operator and obviously there's other people apart from operators, but you can either de-skill them and they just become, you know, like human AGVs in, in the yeah. system, which is a really a waste because you might as well have an AGV if that's what you're going to do. Um, or you can make them highly intelligent, in which case, you know, we need a completely different uh, competency and skill set and a completely different way of training and learning. To, to actually make that, uh, you know, make that happen. So I think, uh, you know, thinking about it from the operator's point of view, and this is where I think, you know, the industry 5.0 people haven't really quite understood the people aspect 
you know, they haven't understood things like psychology and, uh, you know, sociology and these sort of skills. Um, they're just sort of thinking about, you know, we don't, we shouldn't just have the technology. We should, you know, think a bit about, you know, make it nice for the operators, but we know we're near getting as far as the sort of things that Daryl was talking about. How do you create a learning organization um, that actually needs very smart, you know, we need more huddles, more networking, more learning, more exchange of experiences and, and so forth, rather than, than less. Yeah, but also I think it, uh, it, it could be, um, so if, if you look at what uh, AI can do, um, uh, I, I recently heard someone say um, that the skill set that we, we, we tended to train as a young kid, so remembering things uh, or recognizing things, that, that's actually outdated. Computers can do that far better than we can do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we should be looking into different skill sets that we yeah. train. Uh, so creativity, um, uh, uh, just other things that, that are far more important to, to train than, than used to be 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And it does question some of the things we train in Lean because, you know, if you're digitizing some of the stuff you're doing in Lean, you, you know, do we need to know how to collect the data for the OEE? You know, just, just by way of example, if, if that's yes. something we can do yeah. very easily, more how do we use that data? How do we analyze it? And how do we make the improvements? is probably more of the skills that we need, for example. Yeah, and, and uh, coming up with good interface. So maybe there are very, very people that, that are far more smarter than I am, uh, ever will be, uh, but they come up with the nice solutions, uh, but yeah, they created yeah. a very easy interface. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I don't know what's, what's actually in my iPhone, but I can use it. <laughs> no, no, exactly. I mean, if you think about, you know, a lot of the visual boards, you know, the digital visual boards, and you look at them from a, a visual standard point of view, they're absolutely terrible. You know, they're, they're some computer scientist who's got all the information there. It's there, but it's all in glaring colors. It's it's in a it's not in the right format to be able to understood. I I mean, probably most of us have seen that that stuff that goes around on LinkedIn of the the aircraft ticket. You know, the old version and the new version, and yeah. and how the old version is absolutely terrible, and it just some simple graphics would make it easy. But then you look at some of the graphics you see on these machines, they're just like the old airline ticket sort of thing. So, so you know, graphic artists, um, you know, people coming out of the gaming industry and things like that, you know, for example, would, would be really good. How are we doing? Any, any more, Florian? You, you look like you, you're bursting into a comment there. Um, no, I mean, uh, first I want to thank you for this uh, presentation. It's really enlightening. and. I what I understood uh, is that the the key, as you said, is mostly people and uh, the, the the usage they yeah. are uh, of the technology mm. and the perception of utility of the technology mm. in their daily work. Uh, mm. I also agree with the change of uh, skill sets uh, for more creativity, uh, and so the the creative skill set uh, reminds me of uh, the first paper on lean uh, i mean on the tps uh, that explained that the, the the reason of lean was to develop creativity capability in the worker yeah and the the the, the thing you said about the key people reminds me of the the new name that uh, they choose uh, the, the European Commission choose uh, for the industry 5.0. Yeah. And it's ba basically industry 4.0 with uh, human uh, perception and yeah. the, 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 the technology in service of yeah. the, 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 the work uh, shop employees. So, yeah, I, I totally uh, agree and. Uh, I, I look uh, forward to see what's what's Absolutely. coming up. And the, the the other thing I wanted to add is that we are conducting a research right now on the the impact of AI on the perception of uh, engagement uh, of the employee. Yeah. Uh, for now. Uh, the, the results uh, need to be... Uh, this is the eye sensor thing. 
Yes. 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 Um, <coughs> so, so we need we need more data to to, to see what's going on, but. Uh, the intuition is that the the the, the AI uh, can also have a, uh, a negative impact if the the AI is perfect. And the thing is, uh, perfect AI right now is difficult to 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 have or to build. And so the imperfect AI can at least trigger some interest and combine the knowledge and the creativity of the worker with information that the mm -hmm. AI is trying to point out for the worker. So mm -hmm. uh, that's where maybe, yeah, the next research will mm -hmm. try to. Very good. Go. So watch this space because uh, Florian and I have a couple of pieces of work that we're, we're currently <laughs> doing, although I'm probably holding things up as usual. <laughs> <laughs> but we will be coming up with some case material on uh, some of the applications of lean industry 4.0 uh, probably in the new year so um, watch this space we might do a webinar together or something uh, next year a any more or um, is it time for uh, it's it's probably time over there in Norway for um, it's getting dark soon over there is it time for bed soon <laughs> it's been a few days what, what do Norwegians do in the winter? Well, mostly sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't say what else. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay, if, if, if there's no more, I'll close down. I'll hand it back to Emma. Okay. I think the only thing I was going to mention, oh, was yes. you of, sorry about, you were talking about people. And one of the things that so we've tried to do is um, merge kind of the continuous improvement lean team and with the, our digital transformation team, because yeah, what good. we're finding yeah. is they were doing, and we still have that problem where they were doing things which is their skill set, yeah. but then actually then to try and push that out into people do something with that information was quite hard. I think yeah. you did cover it anyway, but yeah, the sort of, of technology, sort of technology push sort of mentality. Yes, and we've we've yeah. had to take a step backwards and say it, you're giving them far more information than they've ever had before. We now have AI, who now have lots of um, yeah. cloud data streams, but we've not actually converted into a person servicing our customer and how they pull all of that and, uh, and create value out of it. Absolutely. I mean, back back in the day, in the sort of late noughties, um, I not only running the Cardiff uh, Lean Enterprise Research Centre, we we had a a government funded cross department research center, which was, if you like, a precursor of Lean Industry 4.0. And we had systems engineers um, uh, who, who were obviously in systems dynamics, forest effect, all that sort of stuff. But we also had <clears throat> some very heavy engineering guys into sort of things like nanotechnology and things like that. And, and in fact, one of my colleagues, Professor Pham, he's in the Guinness Book of Records, or was at the time, for drawing the for drilling the smallest ever hole, um, which was some nano hole, you know, so much so much smaller than the hair or something. And my comment to him is, that's all very well, fam, but why? And he said, because I could. And that, I think, sums up the difference between a lean perspective and a yeah. sort of technology push perspective. Now, at some point, there will be an answer to the question, but he didn't know what it was. So... Uh... <laughs> Very good. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Okay, I'll hand back to Emma then to uh, to close us up for the day. Yes, thanks, Peter, and thank you, everyone. Nice to um, meet some of you and see some of you again. I will send um, a follow up um, email with the recording for those who join late as well. And um, if you need any further information or would like to inquire about more details to join the network, which we're kicking off next year, um, just let me know and we'll we'll keep you updated. Thank you. Great. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you all. Bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.